Hi everyone, Audrin here and welcome to Wild Bush and Grit. Today in this video, I want to show you my process for reloading 6.5 Cranmore using the Lee Bridgelock hand press. Your press comes in a kit with some accessories that we will go over, but there are also a few other things that you need to buy uh, along the kit. You know, the, the, the kit alone is not sufficient. There are a few other things. Uh, the most second important things that you need is of course the dies and here I have a set of three dies from Reading all right and I'll show how I use those in a moment but wait there's more a few other things that you'll need are some shell holders and a case conditioning kit so let me go quickly over uh, some of the things here so here what I have is a case length gauge and shell holder that you'll need and this works with the other thing here which is the case conditioning kit okay so the case conditioning kit is not specific to your caliber but the case length gauge is it comes with a shell holder a lock stud a case land gauge and a cutter so right now I assemble the two so the case land gauge goes into the cutter and using the lock stud and the shell holder, uh, you trim the, the, your case length. And it also comes with a primer pocket cleaners, okay? If you decide to use a hand primer like I do, like this, you will need a shell holder specific for the priming tool. And here in 6.5 is the uh, number two uh, shell holder. The Lee Bridge Lock hand press comes also with accessories to be able to prime your uh, your your cases so you you don't need it I, I think it's just a little bit faster to use this so that that's why this is not mandatory okay the other thing also you'll need and this is also very important because this goes on the, the press itself is a universal shell holder okay and this is r2 again for um, my 6.5 grid more so make sure you get the correct sizes for the caliber that you you want to reload a few other accessories that you will need are a scale here i'm using a hornady scale here and also have a trickler um, you may want to use a lube pad i have one here from already again just just to roll your your case to lube them before entering them into the press last thing is I will also use the um, some of the brush that I use to clean my rifle the same one to clean the neck of the cases first thing to do here is to insert the shell holder so you can actually put your brass in it and the second thing you need to do is to set in one of the die that you have uh, either the neck sizing or the full length sizing die with the decapping pin here uh, in the uh, in the die so to remove the primer right so you get this so i find the press is i think it's great for short cases you know like this is a rifle cases and actually it's not even a long one you know it's a short action but i think this press works best on pistol caliber when it comes to longer cartridge like this one for example it's very difficult to operate and especially that you know you don't have a lot of grip you know though this is very very thin metal very you know it, it, it's actually hurts your finger when you're operating this uh this press and so what i what i've decided to do is I'm using this die here, which is the neck sizing die, that actually didn't set to neck size at all. I, you know, it's I, I pull it up as I could, and I pull in the decapping pin as far as I could to actually just decap, to, just to deprime the cases that I'm sending in. So I'll put the case in, reach the end, and. And now the primer is out, okay? Let's do another one. So at this point, I'm only removing the primer, the spent primer, 
Okay, I'm not doing any sizing. Uh, yes, I know I'm using the next sizing die, but it's so far off that it's not actually doing any uh, deformation. I will full size the, 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 the brass later. And yep. Third one. Okay, so I have three. Those are my three spent primers. They're here, okay? The next step is to what I like to do is actually to take some steel wool and clean the brass with it. Now I have a little trick for you. So when you got your case conditioning kit, it came with a lock stud, which I'm going to use with the shell holder that came with the case and length gauge uh, kit. You know, there's a shell holder that comes with that. These two work in conjunction. You can insert the shell holder into the lock stud and using this, This is like a uh, four odd steel wool, extra fine. And I'm just slowly, you know, gently just buff and polish the surface of that brass. All right, but now that brass is squeaky clean. I'll just finish the base like this. Okay. And using the pocket primer cleaner, I will clean out See, that's, that's probably you can see it, but it was kind of dirty. <laughs> okay. So to resize, now we need to change the die. Um, and now I'm using the full, the full size die. To set the die correctly, what you need to do is first, okay, let me show you this here. That black ring here, you need to unscrew it. Okay, you need to make it loose. And here, of course, you need to have your shell holder in. Now you're gonna close the press and you're going to turn, you're going to turn the die until it touches the top of the shell holder here. Okay. And this technically is the correct size for the thing. The next thing here, you'll need to lock in that black ring here to kind of lock in place so every time you come down and you make contact you know you're at the proper distance for the uh, the die now the lube come out actually i think i didn't mention the lube in the introduction let me talk about lube briefly okay the lube is your friend here the lee bridge lock hand press kit comes with a lube uh, this one and it's okay, it works, but me personally, I prefer using the Redding lube here, so. And you don't need much, you know, just a little bit on the pad. And what I like to do is I just roll it very, very... The only thing you don't you don't want any lube on the shoulder, okay? Like you want lube on the case itself, but not on the shoulder. And what I like to do also is just just the top part here, just touch the pad. So that's one, and the second one, second one here. So no no lube on the shoulder, and just the tip, just the tip. So now this is ready. Now you only need some strength because these are not easy to operate and I struggle a long time. And that's th that this is the main reason that I don't deprime and resize at the same time. Like I want to focus at each steps and the depriming, I made the deprising easier with the setup that I just showed you. And now I'm going to concentrate exclusively on sizing 
the cases. So it's always different. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's really hard. I don't know how it's going to be this time. So now I push this in and usually pushing it in is not a problem. If I can focus. Okay. And usually here pushing it in won't be much of a problem. Okay, so that's easy. It's usually coming out. Wait, that was too easy. Way too easy. What the hell was that? Well, you know what? Okay, I'll take it. It's usually never that easy. Let's make another one. Okay, so this one is harder. Okay. And came out super easy. Okay, alright. But yeah, that was quite easy, you know. Uh, I'll take this. That's great. It's funny, I had to turn on the camera for it to be that easy. It's never that easy. Never. <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening. But anyway, I'll take it. Small victories, right? Small victories. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention. Um, so using the brush that you use to clean your rifle. Uh, I, I like to use this to kind of clean the, uh, the neck. The interior of the neck. And I will use a soft one just to kind of remove any powder residue left in there. Same thing here. It's actually better to do it before sizing. So th this case have been shot only once, so they don't fully need resize. They don't need resizing at all. Actually, I'm just showing you how uh, I I usually do it when needed. So if you remember, this came with the Lee the, the the case conditioning kit. So you have a cutter, and the other kit also that you need is the case length gauge which is specific to your caliber so this is properly calibrated to how long your case needs to be so when it's fully set up here this is you know you screw that part into the case cutter so uh, of course you know your case needs to be deprimed otherwise it won't work and you need to insert the case length to the, the now it's not gonna work because again my case don't need trimming but usually you'll see shaving of metal uh, going away and in the case conditioning kit you have a chamfer tool that allows you to kind of round round up the edges you know this edge could be super sharp and this will remove some of the, uh, the edges you know, make it smoother so you don't cut yourself and bleed to death priming so I'll show you two way of priming I'll show you the first way actually my favorite way of priming is to use the, uh, the, the the primer tool here from Lee. So my shell holder is already in, the primer is already in place. All you need to do is take your shell, sliding in, wear your eye protections, and that's it. So the primer is in. The other way, the hand press came with two of these things, and you need to correct to choose the correct one for priming okay there is a small one for small primer and a large one for large primer on the top of the hand press you need to remove that part and now you need to insert this this pieces here okay that came in the hand press kit okay and now you lock it into place all right the shell holder that was at the base here now you put it on the top all right now I need one primer and this primer goes here of course you need to put it at the right orientation otherwise I won't work and your case goes on top here. And now you push in. And that should be it. Alright. 
and you need to make sure that when you're priming whether you're using this method or the other priming tool you need to make sure that every time and i mean every time your primer do not protrude okay this is of the utmost importance your primer should never ever protrude from the base of your cases okay the, you, when you run your finger you should feel a slight indentation or at least a flat but they should you should never feel a bump okay so next is the powder and now the bullet seeder so the bullet seeder it's already properly calibrated the way to calibrate this is a little bit different than the other one so you need to uh, the first time you'll set your bullet in you have your preferred uh, overall length that you need to reach right you'll make sure that you are calibrating this to be above your overall length and you will slowly slowly increment it for, uh, for to, to sit the bullet properly this is the case with the powder I'm going to put a bullet on top of it I'm at a slight angle and I don't like one bit but it's okay and now I'm going to press it okay so I feel a good contact I just want to see where I'm at right now all right so right now um yeah my length is not full so I still need to advance a little bit so let me just go a little bit further make sure I got contact here okay so now I need to come back up here loosen up this and I'll go let's do it incrementally So I'll do it one quarter of a turn. I'll stop here. All right, and then I'll push it even more. Okay, didn't seem to have moved much. And it didn't, so one quarter was not a lot. So let's do a little bit deeper let's do one full I went uh, halfway okay so now we're getting somewhere and I think I'll need one more quarter Okay, so I believe I reach the overall cartridge length that I want. Let me double check with my caliper here. Okay, so now that the bullet is in, what I want to do is I want to um, crimp this. I need to come here and loosen the black ring here at the base. My system here is very simple. To sit the bullet without crimping, what I'm referring to is... ...is this. You see this here? I got it aligned between the space of five and C. So this is where I know where it is. When I send the bullet in, it's just going to sit the bullet at the proper distance that I want. And of course, this is also set uh, where I need it to be. Once my bullet is in and I want to crimp, what I do is I'll just turn this black ring here clockwise, just a few degrees, just a few degrees, and I'll send it to E. The first E of Creedmoor and I don't know if it's visible again but here the same knob now is facing this E here okay 
and now I can turn in the die until I reach contact with the base. And this is where I'll take my case and just give it a little nudge. And that's it. You don't want to, well, uh, maybe not you, but me, I don't want to crank more than, than this. This is fine for me. This is perfect. Gosh, I love reloading. I just need to go to the range now. Wait, there's more. Uh, I have a few tips for you uh, before closing this video. The first one is it would be a good idea to actually invest in a factory cream dye. Okay, I think this can actually save you some hassle and uh, make your rolling process a little bit more enjoyable. Crimping can be finicky, you know, like I don't have anyone here, but I, I, I ruined a lot of cases when I was uh, setting up this, uh, this press. And uh, the, 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 if I had a factory crimp die, the crimping process would have been easy. So as you saw, it's still doable to do without the crimp die. For 20 Canadian dollar, I think it's totally worth it. And it's going to be first much easier and you will not have to mess with your um, your your, your um, sitting die here. If you have a factory die, you do not need to, to do this. So you keep this as is just for your sitting and then when you're ready to crimp your bullet, you just go on and use your crimping die. The second tips I have for you is to actually maybe also invest in some bushings. Uh, a set of two bushings like this cost uh, about 12, 13 dollar Canadian. And this is also super worth it. And the reason is, well, one of the many feature of the, the Lee breech lock hand press is the actual breech lock bushing. And that thing here makes it easy to change die so you do not have to screw and screw and risk actually you know changing your, uh, your your setting on your dies so what usually you'll do is you're you'll have your your bushings here and each of your die will have a bushing and the bushing makes it easy to put on and off and now it's really easy to actually swap uh, my my dies, you know, wherever, whatever I'm, where I am I in my process, I can just come in, insert this, tight it, so this is ready to operate. When I'm done with my resize, I just remove it, and let's say I'm doing, uh, I want to remove some primer, then I use this one. I'm ready to to prime. Uh, sorry, I'm ready to deprime. It makes it easy to put on and off your dies on your press. So that's a pretty neat uh, feature of the Lee Breechlock hand press. So thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you know you, you took some useful information. Uh, I love making these videos. Let me know in the comment. Maybe you have a similar process or a different process. Are you doing anything differently? Uh, if you're rolling, you have any question, please ask your question. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.